Hi, I'm Bowen Karens. I'm Todd McCulloch. And you're watching the Papa 14 Finals. We're about to see Josh Sharp, Andre Masenkoff, Keely George, and Jim Belsito square off on Iron Man. Iron Man is a fantastic game. I've got one in the collection. It kicks my butt every day. It's, it's awesome. It kills me. It hurts me. I keep coming back for more. It's fast. It's furious. There's a lot of dangerous shots, but when you get it going, there's nothing like it. It's a great sounding machine. It's got great flow, and uh, I love the game, so I'm, uh, I'm really looking forward to this match being played on this machine. What do you think these players are going to be heading for in this game? I think most of these players will be going for the multi-ball strategy. They'll be going for Monger. This is set to hard settings, so they're going to have to shoot that center shot to get the Monger to come up, which is uh, really kind of a tight shot. It's a very satisfying shot. And uh, so a lot of times guys are going to be staying to the orbits to try. It's going to take more shots than normal on these hard settings to get that monger up. And then it takes a bunch of hits to get monger to start multi-ball. And a magnet starts tossing that ball around. So I think most people are going to employ that strategy. Some people may go for some bogey. And that's shooting a, a five, five ramps. But any one of those miss ramps could really be dangerous as the ball can end up going right down the middle. So we'll see which strategy these guys employ. So it's either tight and satisfying or ramp and dangerous. You, huh? you said it. You said it, brother, not me. All right, we'll see. Uh, Andre Masenkoff as player one has picked this game. He had the, the high seed and is going for it. If Josh Sharp wins this game, he's going to put everybody in a, a big hurt with a the chance to clinch the title right here. The hurt locker. So let's watch him play Iron Man here at the Papa 14 final. All right, Andre Masenkoff is player one, and uh, he'll try to follow up his second place in the first game with a good performance here. One of the easiest skill shots in pinball. Just got to choose that that lane. Everybody's going to get the skill shots for this game. And uh, yeah, he's gone for Monger and a nice left ramp there to start. He looks like he might be going for bogey. He's got that that uh, that left ramp shot. is very very quick off the flipper. As soon as that thing gets beyond the, the plastic, it's a quick flip from that right flipper in order to get that center ramp. It's very very early. If you're late, sometimes you end up. Uh, hitting war machine but uh, sometimes that that ball will come flying back to you so uh, it, it really changes whether the ball is screaming through that in lane or whether you've got a trap as to the, as to when you got to flip that center ramp it really really changes depending on the speed and velocity of the ball meanwhile we're seeing some fantastic uh, flipper skill play by Andre and unfortunately loses the ball down the right out lane but it's, uh, just a clinic there of uh, out lane saves as well as Decisions about when not to flip, letting the ball bounce over from one side to the other. Here's Jim Belsito taking over for his ball one, and uh, unfortunately Jim was a little snake bit in game one. We'll see if he can put together something big here. He's got to get the ball to the flipper first, and uh, takes a warning. Come on, Jim. <laughs> ball out of control. Yeah. He should get that under control there and trapped in the left. There's a second warning, I think. He's got control, boy. Bad boy, bad boy. <laughs> double Jim's warning, take double a, warning. Jim's going to take a breather from that one. Have a sip of coffee, think about what he wants to do. He's going to scroll through there. Look There's at his a options. right ramp oh. shot. In the, oh, no. Oh, that ramp could not have been any closer to going all the way. Kind of went into the back of the game and came back out saying, whoop, I should have gone this way. I'm going this way, right down the middle. Sorry, Jimbo. Oh, Jim continuing the snake pit way uh, that his final has started, and Josh Sharp needs to get his head out of the way. Yeah, that's like me. I mean, not that I'm ever on camera, but I, I cover half the play field with my melon. Come on, Josh, get out of the way. We got to do some work here. Thanks, Josh. Definitely took definitely took us. No. Yeah. Josh has got some great looking hair. We can see here he's got some hair products, some gel, some some uh, hairspray. It's looking really good there. And uh, Josh's hairspray is sponsored by uh, Prilosec, I believe. <laughs> Uh, Josh taking a lot of time here, just uh, drinking water, hanging out. What's, I don't know what's going what's, on. Yeah, what's he doing? Uh, we, we, we need a, a wider a camera to see what he's doing there. Might be involved soon. Got a shot clock going here. Oh my goodness. So, uh, we waited for that. That was worth it. God damn it! Josh trying to get control, and he has it. I, I wonder if he might be just extra nervous here, knowing that he's in a, a catbird seat after playing the first game so well. He seems to be wiping a little bit of sweat from his brow, trying to get control here and uh, trying to lock his shot. Those are just narrow entrances to the ramp, and these guys know if they don't get all the way up, they're in a world of hurt. It's coming all the way back down. Josh has uh, made a ludicrous number of missed shots here, but, uh, just getting recovery and uh, staying alive. Like you said, surviving and surviving and advancing. Saves the ball to the right out lane twice consecutively. 
Just got that nice side and cabinet slap. Oh, that one just he knew that was gone. This game has some really murderous out lanes, and when those are in the up position, it really doesn't give you a lot of lot of leeway to get a lot of saves alongside. He did a pretty good job saving a couple there, but you don't want to taunt fake too many times in a row. Yeah, if you look closely over there, there's four different settings for the out lane, and the uh, the posts are at the highest possible with four settings. Uh, here's Kaylee George, and uh, Kaylee. Very good player at making what we just saw right there, live catches, uh, letting, the, letting the flipper meet the ball in a way that uh, cancels the momentum of the ball. That's going to keep the ball out of the slingshots. So in a game like this, very important. The more live catches he can do, and uh, there he throws in some, some dead passes. He's going to keep the ball out of the slingshot. There's a nice really live catch right there. Not put him in, his, in nearly the same danger as some of these other players are going to be in along those side lanes. And uh, kind of concurrent with that is him going for the side lanes and trying with the monger strategy. It really works hand in hand. Kaylee almost to completed monger and a really nice slide there. He took a warning, but a very justifiable warning and a smart one. You got to know you got to know where your limits are, and uh, it's it's good to get one, know exactly what you can get away with, and he's still got a little bit of leeway with uh, an extra warning there before he gets to the tilt. So he's getting control, he's taking time, he's got that center shot lit. Normally, if this was a not hard settings, he could pick one of the three shots and that monger will come up, but in this hard settings, he's got that shot right up the middle. It's a little bit easier from the right-hand flipper. He just nailed it. That's going to bring the monger up, and that's just a, that's just the start of, uh, of the problems here. You still got to do one, two, three, four, five, six shots on the monger in order to start multi-ball. So this is just the beginning. This is just chapter two of a challenging, uh, you know, multi-ball has not been awarded yet. He's halfway there. And he's uh, trying to put the ball sort of off the edges of that monger because there's a magnet right in front of the monger to push the ball into the sides or down the middle. Uh, and he caught the magnet with that first shot, but his second shot was clean. And it's a it's a good it's a good strategy. I've been trying to figure out the best place on my uh, monger to hit him. Sometimes when you go on the sides, it ends up uh, reflecting or deflecting off the sides and ending up in the out lanes. And so while you want to stay away from the magnet, it can also put you in some trouble if it just nicks the side. It ends up towards the sides. Oh, and he drains on the fifth shot. So uh, it sort of looks like a lost opportunity, but at the same time, he knows it's there for for ball two, and uh, he's got the lead at the end of ball one. So nice play by Kaylee. Andre takes over his ball too, and he's got uh, Bogey ready to go, as you can see the ramps flashing. Bogey's ready, it can be either ramp, he gets the center shot up the middle just to get Monger even closer. So he's setting himself up nicely, he's got Bogey, Bogey started. So that's not only the ramps are worth, the outer orbit, so he's got himself uh, four shots in the play field right now, five shots if you oh, count the middle. Oh, that was brutal! <laughs> off the, trying to the left ramp, he missed it too far to the left off one of those little blue drone targets. And that ball disappeared almost faster than we could describe it. Those little blue pills will get you. I mean, I mean, posts will get you every time. Here's Jim. I'll, uh, I'll just ignore that. Uh, here's Jim <laughs> trying to play. Oh, man. Jim is pretty much 0 for 5 at playing a good ball of pinball. And unfortunately, his time is running out. If he takes uh, another low score in this game, uh, there's really no chance that he could win the championship. Uh, great player, but uh, sometimes the game just says, not today. And a lot of times that game is Ironman that says, not today. Uh, here's Josh taking over, and uh, Josh quickly loses the ball down the right outlane, tried to slap save, but uh, was unsuccessful, and uh, his shooting woes continue on this game. And that puts Kaylee up again, and surprisingly, I'll bet Kaylee is very surprised to be uh, so close to the lead as he takes over and starts Monger Multiball. It's, uh, it always feels good when you have one shot and you have the ball on the flipper. The nice thing, that, that magnet is uh, is problematic earlier, but you know on the last shot when you hit it, uh, that magnet is likely going to grab that ball, and uh, sometimes it'll drop it down to that left flipper, and uh, it's a good way to, to get that monger back up just to get ready to, uh, to light the jackpot. And he quickly uh, knocks down six shots on the monger, and now he's got to do a cradle separation here try and score the super jackpot. The super jackpot is that center spinner, as you mentioned, the hardest shot in the game, really. I've been experimenting a little bit on mine. I've had the, the two balls on one it. flipper. And he nailed it, super jackpot. I always felt like that should be worth more in this game. I feel like it's 
about a three million shot. And I think as hard as it is to get that, I always thought that should be worth more. But in a game like this, real tight, three million points can go a long way because that is not an easy thing to do. It takes a lot of shots to even give yourself the opportunity to get a super jackpot. And he's uh, he's put that one in the bag. All right, three million is uh, just about you know that's three million by itself would be good for second place in this game right now. But, uh, Kaylee looks like he's going right back to the same well, shooting the left spinner, uh, getting longer letters, and uh, he's going to get a, be able to get a trap there. That live catch just coming in so handy for him. It really sets him up for the next shot, especially with those uh, with those orbits. If he can just get it along that rail, there's a, there's a little bit of leeway there. Uh, he, he doesn't want to be too early or too late, but there's a, a little bit of room for him to be able to get it along that rail, have the ball travel nicely around, and come back to that flipper and set himself up for the next shot. It's it's the kind of thing where he's got to repeat it, and he's got himself locked into that that left shot. It's it's an easier orbit than the right, in my opinion. I agree, and. Uh... He, as you said, it's just wider, and he's got the, uh, oh, he sprayed the monger again, this time with the left left flipper shot. And the monger, yeah, it is makeable from that left. It's preferable from the right, but uh, he, a perfect shot, and that monger is coming up for, uh, for an extended visit, and Kaylee wants to get him down as soon as possible. That magnet can wreak havoc on, uh, on the ball. So Kaylee uh, glancing off the right edge of the monger. Now he's got to get control. Four more shots to go. If he can get this trap on the right, oh, he missed the monger there, but uh, no big deal. He, he's got a, he's got control again. I think that's one of the one of the things you risk when you're going for the edge is sometimes you don't get a hit, and uh, you really can't can't afford that when it takes so many shots. You really got to make every one count. It always feels good. He's just needed that last one. The magnet grabs it, and he's back in a multi ball. He's back. He's raised the monger again. You have to make a spinner shot right off the bat to get the monger back up, but uh, we really haven't even need to see that from Kaylee. He's done it so quickly. That, uh, Rise he from missed your it. grave. And the super is ready again. And there's a nice little. Uh, there's a bit of a, a, a lag there. Even when you've lost that last ball and you're down to one ball, that super is still available, so you don't want to abandon it. It's a, it's a nice grace period. When I talked to John Borg a little bit, he said whenever he hits that shot, he says, thanks to the Liminator for giving him that extra second. So I always feel good <laughs> when, I, when I nail it last second and I say thanks to the Liminator for giving me that, that little bit of a window where I can, <laughs> if I miss it a few times, I still have a chance. Uh, Lyman, the king of grace periods, is such a grace period on Attack from Mars that uh, uh, Kaylee once scored a super jackpot on Attack from Mars that was so far buried into the grace period that the uh, tournament officials thought the game was broken. <laughs> but it wasn't. It was Lyman. <laughs> it, it was Lyman's generosity. Yeah. And uh, Kaylee with a, just a huge ball right now. He's going uh, towards 20 million, and he's actually got War Machine multi-ball ready now, too. I mean, it is a huge ball, Bowen, but wouldn't you say that that pinball looks about the same size as the other one that the other guys are playing? It doesn't look any bigger to me, but you say it's a huge ball. I, I believe so. I, I mean, you have to measure it just to see how big the ball really was. But uh, uh, the Monger's coming up now for the third time on this ball. He, keeps, he, he might as well just stay up. Kaylee just keeps bringing him up. He might as well just stay up. Stay up, man. Don't bother. And this time, Kaylee has started War Machine multi-ball, which gives him even a second a second way of clearing the monger. It's almost like an insurance policy against mongers. It's yeah, it's a it's a nice thing to uh, to have to be able to give yourself a little bit of a uh, little bit of leeway and start a multi-ball before getting the monger down to get yourself another multi-ball and get them going together. Uh, unfortunately for Kaylee, that was about the worst multi-ball I've ever seen uh, from War <laughs> Machine, but uh, you know, it's uh, it's hard to be critical with someone who's playing this ball because uh, he's really rocking the rocking the crap out of this game. Right and wow, getting some bounce overs in the monger. This is a uh, really brilliant play. It, it is. This is a, a game that I know Kaylee likes. I've got this game in my collection. I was playing Kaylee in one of our league events, and it was my choice. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to take Kaylee to Iron Man because it's a tough game, and he's a lot better than I am. And uh, this is a game that can, can really uh, make life hard, even on a great player. Uh, my strategy backfired. Kaylee annihilated me. And then later in the tournament, when Kaylee had pick, 
he chose Iron Man, and that's when I realized, wait a second, I just took him to the Briar Patch because I chose a game that he later took me to. So uh, he and Iron Man, uh, they they do pretty well together, and I've uh, and my game was not set to these hard settings, so he's uh, he's having a heyday with this thing, playing it like it's on simple mode. Yeah, Kaylee actually uh, has three out of the five tasks towards a bonus. Uh, any player who gets the do or die by getting all five lights lit up in the main the main playfield area could win $500 bonus uh, in this game. And I don't know, maybe uh, we might see Kaylee going for that. Well, he, he might. He's got himself a nice little lead, and it's uh, it's definitely a challenging thing. It's one of the things that I really like about this game. If you're if you're playing at home, you you might want to reset a game, but it's it, it ends up being three one ball games. There's always something to play for at each ball, and uh, it really translates to tournament play where you might have two bad balls. You can't hit reset. You can't start again. You might have one ball left. You got to make the most of it. And you can do a lot of damage with one ball. Get all five of those characters lit up and uh, get yourself a five hundred dollar bonus. It's uh, it feels really good when you're when you're able to do it yeah not almost uh, not every tournament has a five hundred dollar bonus for this uh, something special here at papa <laughs> but uh there's a fourth task completed and uh, all kaylee needs now is whiplash uh but he'll need to get the monger cleared first you can't do both at the same time kind of a cool little tidbit uh, obviously josh sharp in this match uh he uh, he let me know that he was uh Part of the, the think tank behind the do or die mode in, in uh, talking to, to Lyman and, and the programmers. Hey, why don't you have something where you get all five characters uh, in, in one try? So uh, Josh really had some input into this game, and uh, now we need to see whether that input uh, translates to his play on this machine. Well, it's certainly translating into a big, big score for Kaylee. Uh, Kaylee now over 32 million in his fourth longer multi ball of this turn. Uh, just uh, just blowing the doors off of everybody right here. And uh, the other players just basically stuck sitting and watching this, which makes it even worse. <laughs> yeah, you usually don't have to watch anybody play Iron Man for too long. This is uh, very impressive with, uh, with how difficult this game is. And uh, Kaylee making it look very routine, like it's a game that has extremely long ball times, which it really is, and he's making this look uncharacteristically easy. And uh, yes, Kaylee is going for the do or die now. He's backhanding it into the. Oh! And he backhanded into the whiplash. Needed, I think, two more shots there, but what a ball. The crowd loving it. 38 million points now for Kaylee George. And unless we see some miracle, like a do or die completion from one of these other three, that is going to win the game. Do or die to completion. That would be really impressive to see. The pressure is definitely on here. Uh, you can't, you know, you're not supposed to look at the other player's scores, but it's got to be hard not to see that extra digit, the place value in, in, in that score by Kaylee. Andre uh, looked like he was going back towards bogey again, which he had started on ball two because he had no monger progress. And that, uh, that's another danger of going for the bogey strategy, which is that uh, second bogey is really hard to get. Or as we saw from uh, from Kelly and oh man, uh, Jim Belcito <laughs> losing second ball of the game to that right ramp down the middle, and unfortunately for Jim, that's basically going to be the end of his uh, opportunity at this tournament to win. He can still come in second or third, but uh, he does not have a chance to win the tournament at this point. And uh, Josh Sharp's ball three ends very quickly as well. He is going to squeak out a point here for third place. But uh, Kaylee now with sort of the victory lap, an opportunity to just plunge and let the ball go, and he's got the victory. He's got the victory. He's not going to play it out, try and get the do or die for the 500 bucks. He's going for 10 grand, baby. Who needs 500 when there's 10 grand on the table? Absolutely right. So some huge quality play by Kaylee George. He's going to get his initials up for the game here as Kevin comes over to record the scores. Kaylee with a four-point victory here on... Iron Man puts him at five points overall, ties him with Josh Sharp. Josh taking third in this game, also has five. Andre taking second again for four points. And that means that if Josh, Andre, or Kaylee win the next game, they will be the Papa 14 world champion for $10,000. And it looks like we're going to be going to F14 Tomcat.